So good morning, everybody. I hope you all have had a good week. Um, my aim today is to bring you an assembly that is uplifting and it will move you and it will inspire you um, as our afternoons are getting darker at the moment and we're sort of heading into second week of lockdown. So I thought, let's put, let's put a smile on your faces. So photo of the week, let's have a look. So we start now with two photographs that were sent in by Molly Edwards and Emily Northey Dennis in 4L. They took these photographs um, in the junior school woods and I particularly like this little heart shaped leaf, which is very beautiful. So thank you to Molly and to Emily for sending those in. And I also had a really lovely one sent in from Frances Todd. Um, this is the view uh, from her window. And she said, um, it's so it looks as though the sky was on fire uh, when the sun came up. So I thought that was really beautiful. So thank you very much uh, to those three for sending those photographs in. Now, Mrs. Breeze also sent in a very moving clip. Um, this is a clip of a top ballerina. The lady that you'll see in the film, Marta Gonzalez, she was previously the prima ballerina with the New York Ballet. But in her 90s, she suffered from Alzheimer's, a disease that significantly affects the brain and in particular memory. However, certain things can trigger the sufferers to remember and to remember things and places and people. And in particular, it's been demonstrated that music can trigger memories. And the music to Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake, the ballet that she danced many, many times as prima ballerina, caused this response that we're going to see now when it was played to her by her carer. Let's have a look. So thank you to Mrs. Breeze for sending that in. And I thought, how remarkable the power of music for someone who was disorientated, didn't even really know her name or people around her, to be able to remember every move in the footage that was her dancing. And you could see and that the power of music to transport her back and to trigger those memories. Um, and we're going to do a special day, a special assembly live across the UK, um, celebrating the arts and the power of the arts, music, drama, art. Um, and that's going to be in two weeks time. And, and that clip to me that was so moving and so powerful really just sums up how much of an impact the arts, music, everything can have on our lives. So thank you very much, Mrs. Breeze, for sending that very beautiful and moving clip in. Now, our hymn this morning is an uplifting gospel hymn, 
and it has been performed by our sixth form A-level musicians. And Mrs. Floyd, she's going to explain which line that you and I and we, everybody, we have to sing. And I know you're all up for a challenge. So let's give virtual polyphony a go. Um, let's cue the hymn. We're going to attempt a gospel song this morning. Mrs. Holloway will be disappointed to hear there are no set actions for this song, but don't let me stifle your creativity. If you've got moves, let them out. So it's in three parts, and I'm joined by these wonderful six formers here. And you need to sing the main tune, which I'm gonna sing in this box. So let me just go through it with you first before we put it into parts. So here we go, your tune goes like this. Great is he. with the six formers adding in different parts you stick with me in this box hold the line here we go Great is he. There was someone, yes, at the front with a microphone doing a solo. Well done if that was you, Rachel Irvine. Excellent effort. Acknowledged and seen. And thank you to Mrs. Floyd and to all our A-level musicians. That was really lovely. It was ambitious, but I like you to think big. So now I am going to hand over to Lydia, Emily and Fran in the sixth form, who are going to uh, explain about our plans for the now legendary Amnesty International Christmas concert. Are you there, Emily? Hi, good morning, everyone. Today we are going to be talking to you about charity Amnesty International and how the sixth form have organised a Christmas concert in support of this amazing cause. We have a small clip to show you explaining what Amnesty does and how they protect human rights across the globe. After World War II, the countries of the world got together and said, we can't let this happen again. In that war, over 50 million people lost their lives. The word genocide was introduced to our language. So the countries of the world gathered and they created the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. They said, these are the human rights that all human beings have because they are human. Amnesty's role is to make sure that those human rights are enjoyed by everyone, everywhere. Amnesty does this in three ways. Firstly, we research human rights abuses. Secondly, we bring the evidence of those abuses to those who are in power and who are able to make the change that is needed to stop them occurring. And thirdly, we mobilise millions of people around the world to pressure those decision makers to make them stop those human rights abuses. One of the things that makes Amnesty unique is that for 50 years it's been a grassroots movement. It started with groups of people in small communities getting together to put pressure on governments that locked up people for their political beliefs. Many people in our world are suffering with many kind of torture by their states or uh, by their law enforcement agency or force. Grassroots has always been central to what Amnesty does. It's a worldwide movement of millions of people with hundreds of thousands here in Australia who get together and work in their communities 
to protect their own human rights and the human rights of people around them and the human rights of people around the world. Amnesty campaigns are many different human rights abuses. Amnesty's campaigns can start from a member of the public walking into one of our action centres anywhere in the world and telling us about someone who's been abducted, someone who's at threat. We research, we make sure we know what's happening and then we campaign if we find that human rights abuses are occurring. But our campaigns can also come from long-term strategic thinking. What can we change about the world to make it safer for people? And it's those sort of campaigns, the things like the Convention Against Torture and a Global Arms Trade Treaty that potentially save the lives of millions of people. So whether it's the rights of an individual or the rights of millions, Amnesty is committed to change no matter how long it takes. As a school, we have been involved in Amnesty for many years as we are in a privileged position as empowered, educated girls. We believe it's our responsibility to help these individuals who are robbed of their human rights. This year, the Sixth Form have organised the annual Christmas concert once again in support of Amnesty. This has shown to be extremely successful throughout the years, from dance routines, band performances and comedy skits. Not only have we supported Amnesty through raising money, but last year our school held the first Amnesty conference with other schools in the hub, which involved group lectures and discussions on topics such as climate change, girls in education, modern slavery and global health care. This raised awareness for some of their current cases, such as Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe. Nazanin is an Iranian British citizen who was visiting her parents in Iran with her one-year-old daughter, when she was arrested on her way home and separated from her family on accusations of plotting to overthrow the Iranian government. This was four years ago now, and Nazanin is still not returned home, despite Amnesty's best efforts to bring her home. Amnesty's support has made Nazanin's case global news and has collected over a million signatures demanding the Iranian government to release Nazanin so she can return home to her family. Amnesty International is a movement of over 7 million people worldwide who are here to protect human rights. They exist to make sure everyone and their rights are respected, protected and enjoyed. But right now, our world is in the midst of a climate emergency that is threatening our future. Amnesty calls out to governments to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions, stop burning fossil fuels, and work together to share the burden of a climate crisis. This is why it is especially important for us as a school community to plough on with our annual Christmas concert despite being in the midst of a pandemic. So this year we will be holding a virtual Christmas concert which will take place on the 9th and 10th of December during form time. On the 9th we will be airing students acts so if you wish to take part please send your audition by the 4th of December or if your audition is too long we can organise a socially distanced meetup to airdrop. So far we do have an interesting range of teacher acts which do only seem to be getting better <laughs> and this year we'll be accepting donations minimum of a pound which will go towards people who really need Amnesty's help. These will be collected by your form tutors in the morning of the assembly. It would be amazing if we could see all of you there supporting this amazing charity. Thank you for listening and we hope you have a lovely weekend. Thank you very much, Sixth Form. That's fantastic. So it's it's a charity that we're really committed to. And I was very proud that we were the first school in the UK to host a national conference last year. And um, maybe we could do another virtual one. Perhaps we could do that, couldn't we? Right. I'm going over to Mrs Pugh now. Are you there in junior school, Mrs Pugh? Yes, we are. Good morning, everyone. We're all here in junior school. Um, and also today is another charity day, but we're going to do it slightly differently this year because it's actually Children in Need Day today. Um, but this year in junior school, we're going to do something slightly different because we're all going to go dotty on Monday. So in junior school on Monday, everybody, teachers included, is going to try and wear something dotty or spotty um, to imitate Pudsey Bear on Monday. So uh, junior school, I'm looking forward to that, to seeing everybody going dotty on Monday. Now, I was sent... Um, a poem this week that I thought you'd all really enjoy. I think it's very topical, but it also really made me smile and I hope it will make you smile too. So I was sent this. Smiling is infectious. You catch it like the flu. When someone smiled at me today, I started smiling too. 
I passed around the corner and someone saw my grin. When he smiled, I realized I'd passed it on to him. I thought about that smile, then I realized its worth. A single smile, just like mine, could travel round the earth. So if you feel a smile begin, don't leave it undetected. Let's start an epidemic quick. Let's get the world infected. So I hope today we are going to pass our smiles worldwide. Anyway, it's lovely to see everybody. And uh, I look forward to seeing what we come up with on Monday in junior school. And I must say this year, I think it would be lovely if year five and six wanted to do some auditions for the Amnesty concert. Um, I know it's something that I uh, feel very strongly about as well. Um, I feel very strongly that we should stick up for people's rights and people should not be imprisoned um, for their political reasons without proper trials. So well done to the sixth form. And I hope that some of the girls in year five and six Perhaps they can find out a bit about Amnesty International and uh, some of you might like to get involved in auditioning. Okay, anyway, have a great weekend, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, Mrs Pugh. That's super and um, how fantastic that we have been um, fundraising for the Royal British Legion this week. We're doing Amnesty International. We've got um, children in need. So much going on around the school. Now, I have some congratulations um, I have some more netball news. The following students have been selected to join the satellite squads for netball. This is Alice Tilly, Annabelle Smith, Tash Pastanji, Lara Nichols, and Charlotte Baggett. So can we give them all a round of applause? Well done. And it's time now to promote some exciting Christmas themed competitions coming up let's have a look what's the first one we're going to see now then new for 2020 courtesy of mr kirkland we have our pet at christmas house photography competition i'm not quite sure about the cat in the wrapping paper but if you would like to take a christmas themed photograph that doesn't involve any discomfort of your pet and send it in. And I think Mrs. Pugh, we can probably do this for junior school as well. And just, yes, thumbs up. So um, any, contribution, sorry, I laugh. any contributions to the Pet at Christmas house photo competition, could they be sent please to pet at talbotheath.org. Uh, and, and we'll probably let this run for the next few weeks. Um, and, and please do think about your pets. You love them very much. Uh, and it can be virtually done. Um, so that's that's the first competition. Now, do we also have a flyer potentially for the cake decorating? Yes, we do. Here we go. Cake decorating competition. We're going to uh, rely on all of your honesty here because you're sending in a photograph rather than just a cake. It can't be one that you've got off the web. So um, perhaps we need some evidence of you with icing on your hands or something standing next to it. Um, but please, please. Uh, send in your cake decorating um, and if you can get the ingredients from your supermarkets it's, it's a perfect lockdown activity it, uh, along with the Christmas pet competition so there's a couple of things that we can be doing in the next few weeks at home um, and everybody's invited to enter that competition and um, watch this space I've been having some thoughts about a star showstopper bake-off competition um, so where the staff have to bake, they have to get a bit of footage of them, just like Bake Off, where, you know, the, the cakes are falling off and everybody's trying to ice and there's someone in their kitchen going, two minutes, two minutes, trying to be Noel Fielding. Um, but uh, I think quite a few staff are up for this, particularly in the PE department, some quite competitive bakers there. So uh, I shall be announcing the Staff Showstopper Bake Off competition. Um, watch this space. Right. Now. Mrs. Eels uh, put together a poppy digital um, display and asked for people to send in entries. And we're going to show you now just what you did.
Really beautiful, really moving drawings there. So I think we'll put those into a display so that you can see them around the school. So we're going to finish now with a prayer from Reverend Burke. Jonathan, are you there? Indeed, so much that's positive. So we remember that we're in a season where many folk are celebrating the light overcoming the darkness. Let us pray that we may be the light in others' lives, bringing hope and humour, fun and creativity never forgetting that the light is stronger than the darkness and the day will overcome the night. Though the shadows linger all around us, let, our turn, let us turn our faces to the light. Amen. Amen. Amnesty International symbol there, the candle shining in the darkness. Have a super weekend, everybody. Bye.